I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I give myself away, I give myself away. So you can use me, I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use me. You are the God who is. Oh no. You are the God who was, who is, and is to come. Jesus. You are the God who was, who is, and is to come. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, only you are God, Jesus, Jesus, only you are God, Holy Spirit, welcome, welcome, welcome. Holy Spirit, welcome, welcome, welcome. Emi mi mo kabo, kabo, kabo. Emi mi mo kabo, kabo, kabo. Holy Spirit, we are ready. Holy Spirit, we are here. Holy Spirit, we are ready. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. You are my peace, peace like no other, peace like no other, oh, riches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your might, you lift me up, you lift me up, Father God in the mighty name of Jesus, lift me up this morning, lift us up, this special morning glory moment tribe, you've entrusted me with. This special love and healing ministry you've entrusted me with. This family, Father God. Father, you see in your word where two or three are gathered, there you are in their midst. I am gathered here with this community, this virtual community, 
And we are gathered in your name. Gathered because we believe in your word in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. That we will come to you when we are weary and heavy laden, you give us rest. Actually, you are inviting us to do that at all times. To come to you with all that is on our heart. All that is weighing on us. As members of the body of Christ. As members of the church of God. As, as members of the temple of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without your grace. We cannot do without the power of the gospel that transforms. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. Igwe, Igwe. Only you are God, Papa. Only you are God. And so this morning, as I mother my life on Jesus, and I wake up early in the morning, as he did in Mark 1, verse 35, and come to this quiet place to pray to you, and to pray for the members of our churches, all our churches, For all believers and those who are yet to believe, but who gather together, Father God, praying for a word from you that will transform them, that will show them how much you love them unconditionally, and how much you want them to come, because your grace is sufficient for them, Father God. I pray, I pray that we may be steadfast in this search and in this rest in your word and in your bosom. Father God, I pray as we are still in this matter of the church, that as we gather, we lay our eyes, we focus on you on the cross and not on the man of God or the woman of God. It might be hard, Papa, but it is not impossible. Many have been hurt, I once was, by the leadership in these churches. Could it have been because they, 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 they moved their focus from you and focused on, this, on these people? And instead of, of surrendering all to you, they surrendered all to these people. Today I pray for a revival. Not in the churches as buildings and institutions and organizations, but in the hearts of your people, the members of these churches. That is all of us. Because your church, Papa, is you. And it is we will gather in your name, Papa. We will believe in you. We will invite the Spirit to come and move and live and have its being in our lives and have its way, Papa. I pray, Papa, that we really believe in you to the point where we start living by faith and not by sight. Because your word says the just shall live by faith. And that we come to realize that it is not our, by our works that we are going to be saved and that we are saved, Papa. It is not how much we kill ourselves in the service of some of these churches and the leadership. But it is in how much we believe in you and have faith in you. And how much we know that we believe that your grace is setting us free. Your, your grace is sufficient for us. And that what we do should be done out of love and not out of, out of confinement and coercion and, 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 and fear. That we are going to be ostracized. That we are going to be, to be, to be excommunicated. That we are going to be looked, at or looked upon whatever. We should do it out of love. We should sow seeds out of love. We should give our offerings out of love. We should tithe out of love. We should serve out of love for you and not for the man of God and the woman of God and, and all those leaders and all of that. We should even dress up to come into your presence out of love and not out of fear. 
We should open our mouth to speak in these assemblies out of love and not out of fear and not out of ego. Help me, Papa. Help me. Who is at the same time a student and a teacher? Who is at the same time a leader and a student? Who is at the same time a mentor and a mentee? At the same time, a child of God and a servant of God. Papa, help me. In Jesus' name, I pray to you this morning. Amen. My special... MGM tribe, another heavy week for me. But God is God. I have surrendered it all to Him, withholding nothing, and I love it. It's better. This life is better for me than the life I lived out there. So, as much as it can sometimes get heavy, I love it. I put my hand on the plow, and nobody's forcing me, nobody's caressing me. It's an inside transformation, and it's so beautiful. And I, I want to invite you to, to try it, to say, Father, have your way in my life. Have your way. That's what I did. And gradually, he's been changing me and using me and molding me in the process and, and blessing me exceedingly and abundantly. And when I go now to do whatever he wants me to do, which he puts on my heart, I, he doesn't force me. I do it with love. And when I can't, I say, Papa, Papa, you know that me, I'm not yet there. Oh. Papa, I beg, help me gradually. And he does. So his strength is the best one you can have for your journey. Okay, so um, I want to share from... First Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. Because I'm praying for the members of our churches, of the churches, right? We are all members in one way or the other. Even the leaders themselves are members, right? Um, because I once heard, and I know, that if you are a pastor and you don't have a pastor, then, like me, I'm a therapist, I'm a psychotherapist, I have my own therapist. I have people I go to. I don't know it all. So there's no bishop, archbishop, pope, nobody. Who doesn't have somebody? I used to hear even the Pope has somebody he confesses to. You know, he has his own spiritual director. Everybody needs. So we are all members of the church of God. All of us living on this earth. Believers and non-believers. Because you don't know at what point somebody actually becomes a believer. It's not necessarily when they do the, the altar call and when you lay hands on them and all of that. No. I was just watching a, a teaching on uh, how they just live by faith. This is just part one. And the man of God, the pastor, was saying that it is not you who does something to another person. We sometimes think we have to change people. We have preach, 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 make disciples. Eh? It just means that you plant those seeds like the Apostle Paul said he lays the foundation. And then you let the power of God in that gospel that you are sharing with this person do that transformation in them. The Holy Spirit transforms. The Holy Spirit heals. This ministry is called love and healing, but it's not me who does anything to anybody. Oh. No, me. Oh. What do I know? Which power I get? No. I just preach like this. I just talk like this. And then, well, if you believe in the talk, you go and start searching your own that word. And you start praying. And as you are praying, you start feeling it in you. Like it's moving. It's moving. The spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. Ah, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Okay, so 1 Peter 2, verse 9 to 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a holy priesthood. Who are you? All of us. So don't think that because you go to a church, you uh, you stay, you baby Christian forever, 
You don't know you nothing. No, you know. You know, you know, you know, you know that the word says here that you are a chosen race. So it's not by coincidence that you are here or that you are going into a church. Stop moving from one church to the other thinking that that is where you are going to find Jesus and that is where the man of God is going to prophesy and that is where you are going to be delivered, all of that. None of those things happens without your disposition. None. That is why you can do 100 prayer lines in 100 different churches. Hands are imposed up or laid on you by 100 different men of God. Nothing. And then you blame God or you blame the man of God. Drag him all over social media, everywhere. Yet, the same man of God will just have an encounter with one person. Maybe not even lay hands and that person's life is changed. That person was so disposed. It's even there in the Bible now. Am I the one telling you what? So you are a chosen race, a, whole, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Wow. A people for his own possession. Of course. He's a jealous God. Think that word that you create you and put you here and be giving you strength, filling you up and all of that. And then he cannot even say, my people, my child, cannot say, Mark, my darling, cannot say, you, why not? Ah, yes, so oh, my children, no, oh, yes, that my children, I, I call them one by one. I know I didn't create them and everything, but they came to me now in my womb. I carried them here so that my children, my sons, right? Okay. But all of that, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's admit it now. All of us, all, we have all seen and fallen short of his glory. And so we need the every hour. That's why we also go around, we look. Yesterday I attended a corporate prayer in the upper room by the Waterbrook Church. That was my first time. I'm going to make it a date now every 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, uh, 7 p.m. West African time. You can join on YouTube if you don't have access to their Zoom. So beautiful. Yes, I can pray on my own, but I also want to pray in fellowship like that. And I also want to go to a physical church, you know, with my family on Sundays. And, 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 I, and I want to pray with my uh, Church Without Words Evangelical Association when we do prayer calls once a month or whenever. And I want to fellowship with my bishop and I want to talk with people. That is it. We are not an island. We cannot do it alone. I don't live alone, even if I lived alone. I want to talk to somebody, all of that. So when we gather together like that, when we go to church as a people, it's also because we want to iron sharpens iron, right? We want to, we want to support each other. We want to work with each other on this journey called life. We don't gather together to be abused, and we don't gather together to abuse others. We don't gather together to watch what is wrong and then go God help us. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And when you receive mercy, what do you do? You show mercy. So, that's why on Monday I prayed for the leaders of our churches. Because God put it in my heart. You spend more time praying for them than watching them like hawks. And, 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 and joining the crowd to pick stones and throw on them. And, and dragging them on social media. Last time I ever do a video to talk about the man of God who has fallen or who has... Even if it's about abusing a child, let other people... Let other people roast you for that and let God judge you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I will show mercy. I will say, God have mercy on him. God have mercy on them. That's my choice. And as a member of the body of Christ, all parts of that body are important. So the head cannot tell the hand who has use for you. The leg cannot tell the eye... If I don't walk, how do you go from place to place? Because we have seen how people even without legs, limbs. There's a picture I follow on Instagram. Uh, I don't hear, I cannot pronounce his name, but he doesn't have hands and no limbs, hands and feet. But his life, huh, probably better than mine, 100 fold. So, yes, that's not it. 
But then we cannot uh, uh, discard anybody because of any... We are all important in the body of Christ. And that is why I wrap up this sharing by mentioning um, Romans 1, 17 and Galatians 3, verse 11. I want to look at Galatians 3, verse 11. Romans 1, 17 says that, and the just shall live by faith, or the just live by faith. Let me just um, read it, right? I had to be praying more, but sometimes when these things are on my heart, I'll share. I'm going to be ministering shortly after this, though, but uh, let's look at it quickly. Romans 1, 17. Yeah, the title of that pass, the, the short passage is, The righteous shall live by faith. Ah, it's beautiful. Let me even start from verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yeah, and this is what the, the, the man of God was using to uh, um, teach about the just shall live by faith. And it is by the power of the gospel. The power, um, he's not ashamed of the gospel. The Apostle Paul writing to the Romans, he's not ashamed of the gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone, 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 all of us. Okay, so verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith, for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And faith comes, faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God, hearing, 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 not just one time like this. I read, I read, I read, I read. And then I meditate on what I read because it is to everyone who believes. And for it, in, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. And you know, any revelation, it's, it's gradual. Even if you get it once in your head, then it starts to manifest itself gradually. And sometimes it is even revealed to you over and over, so that you gradually embrace it. Galatians 3 verse 11. The same passage, kind of. The righteous shall live by faith. Okay, he was writing to the Romans before. Now he's writing to the Galatians. And you see, somewhere the Apostle Paul said, you just have to repeat some things. You have to say it over and over again. You can listen to the same uh, message and you, you have a different, um, you receive it differently on a different day and all of that. So it's not like... Um, you should get tired of listening to something, right? Especially to the word of God. Okay, so um, Galatians 3, uh, verse 11 says, Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. You can never obey all the Ten Commandments and not break one even in your thoughts. And the Israelites even had what? 613 laws. Oh, goodness. How can you do that? Hey, Okay, so Jesus came to just put all those in two. Say, fulfill it and say, he who believes in me, he who loves the Lord your God with all your heart and all your pride and all your strength, all your spirit and soul and everything. And he who loves his neighbor like himself. That is it. And when you do love this way, there's no way you can even break any of those other things consciously. And if you do it unconsciously, Quick, 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 back to Jesus, Papa. Oh. The righteous shall live by faith. Amen. Thank you so much, Father God, for your word. Help us, help us, members of all these churches, wherever the church is found, the house church, the church in our hearts. Oh, my goodness, Father God. Help us. Help us, Papa. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. 
Help us, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, help us. Help us. Help us. To review in our hearts what being a member means. Help us, Spirit of the Most High God, help us. Help us. Help those who live from members to church planters and leaders and, and who are all of it. Help us. Help all those who have been hurt by church. Papa, meet them at the point of need and heal them in a way that only you can heal. So that they don't give up on you. They don't give up on your church. And that they are able to forgive those who hurt them. And forgive themselves too. For making themselves that sheepishly available to be hurt. Yes, Papa, I own it. If I did not find myself there, if I did not take myself there, I wouldn't have been abused. So yes, I also have to be accountable for that. I made that step. It was out of faith, Papa. It was out of a need and everything. I was vulnerable and everything. Yes, Papa. But nobody tied a rope on my neck. So as much as we members sometimes want to throw stones and point fingers and curse and, 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 and rebuke and bind and cast, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. Help us, Papa. Help us, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know from which angle that I was going to do this this morning. I was like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Say, yeah, well, have you put your hand on the plow? I say, yes, Papa. Are you bargaining? No, Papa. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Thank you. Um, yeah, next MGM on Friday. And uh, ministration twice a week. I'll be doing that shortly after this. And then um, Church Without Words Evangelical Association. We do just so much. Um, I was so blessed to visit my bishop, our bishop, Beryl Esembe Nalova in Ghana. I spent five days. Ah, oh, five loaves. Oh, Papa. Oh, Papa. Oh, Papa. What a significant time I spent with her in Ghana. And... Um, I'm going to put the link to our website eventually. You might want to visit us and, 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 and you know, become a partner, support us in the work we do. That's my church, right? So your church can be a virtual church, but it's a beautiful thing to belong to a church, a body of believers, a body of Christ, and to take care of your church. By doing what you have to do there without grumbling. Grumblers don't go to heaven. We used to sing that song in high school. Grumblers will go to heaven. Grumbler, what are you grumbling about? You can set your case. You can say, no, I'm not comfortable about this or that and all of that. And I've done that before. Not in this particular church because it's, I just love it. Like, Oh, my goodness. I'm going to write a book next year, maybe one or two. Not maybe. I write two books, actually. And one of them will be on my mentorship experience. And one of them will be on my journey this last year. My abstinence recommitment journey. Oh, I've, actually, I'm doing all of this as part of that abstinence recommitment journey. Although I know that it's going to continue after this journey, right? So God is good all the time. And all the time, God is... Good. Have a wonderful Wednesday, world. Stay blessed.